you can just go into the app store and obviously this is on ios but you can do the same with uh, android and i just go and search type in you can type in build or plan grid and this is where it throws people off because it's plan grid build app and it houses both of those platforms so if you just click on the plan grid build app Oh, it's nice. Our competitor pops up, but you see there it's a free app. You can download it. I'm just going to hit open, but it's this guy over here on the left plan grid build app. I'm just going to hit open. I already had it open, but normally it would open up and then you'd use your same credentials, your user ID, your password to be able to log in. And then what happens is I'm going to jump back because I should have logged out before, but that's all right. It'll bring you to this page. And right here at the top, toward the top, just below the search bar, you'll see plan grid on the left and build on the right. Well, this is to toggle between the two platforms. So if I just hit plan grid, now I'm seeing projects that I have in plan grid. Being as that uh, H dot is moving over to build, you're going to want to keep it over here on build. But if you just tap build, it'll show all the projects that you are currently a member of. So there's two different categories here. The on device, these are ones where I've actually downloaded, say, sheets or files, information from that project. I've actually downloaded it onto my iPad. The other section there in the cloud would just be other projects that I'm a member of, but I haven't downloaded. And I can download them if I want to. Um, just be cognizant of space, right? I mean, some of these projects have a lot of documents on them. Um, and you'll end up eating up your storage pretty quick. Now over here, you can see on the left on those on this device, there's a the little exclamation mark. And all that means when I click on this is that there has been some additional um, updates to this project. Like maybe the sheets have been updated, maybe some files have been added. Um, and that's just a reminder, hey, you should sync. Um, so that you're looking at the most current information. It's a good habit to get into that. You can set it up to where it'll automatically sync um, whenever you've got internet connection. For right now, I'm just going to skip it though, and I'll show you, actually, I'm going to jump right back. I'm going to show you with these three dots on the right. If I click on that, I can force a refresh, and then I can have this edit download options. And this is one I would definitely just suggest that you guys look at because you may not need to download all the photos that have been saved or all of the whatever files it might be, right? It may be that you just need to download certain uh, modules within it. So you can kind of customize your selection there. Again, I'm going to jump back into here real quick. I'm going to go ahead and skip because I don't know how many have been updated and I don't want to sit here for 15 minutes waiting for them to update. So it brings you into the home page very similar to what you have when you're when you log in through the web browser, obviously the formatting is slightly different, um, but down here along the bottom is where you can access the different tools uh, or modules within it. So you've got Sheets. Um, a couple of things I did want to show you about Sheets here. Uh, you could type in and search. There's a filter up here, um, and you could, if you wanted to filter it by markups you have made or publish markups by anybody, it, hey, this one's really nice too, because a lot of times people get on there and they're going through multiple plans or sheets and they're like, wait, I need to go back to that one. And this recent, this clock will show all your recent plans that you've been looking at. Um, that one really is helpful. And then the favorite sheets, I'll get into how you make them a favorite, but by clicking on that, that'll show you those that maybe you frequent a lot that you've now favorited, right? Because we all have that, maybe it's that first floor, or well, I'm talking about a building, but I'm sure uh, even within the civil arena, you'll have those sheets that you're frequently referencing, and it's not a bad idea to just go ahead and favorite those. You can also do a filter it by tags, version sets. Uh, I'm going to jump out of this because I do want to, actually, let me remove that filter first. Um, I did want to show when you're in that sheet, you can do markups. Um, you can create issues within here, but up here along the top, again, you have some of those same features. You can go to the recent. Those are the recently viewed. There is this compare um, where you can compare sheets, but
but there's a different way to get into that that I'll show you just in a second. And then you've got this filter, which again, you can filter out based on markups um, as well as pins that are specifically on that sheet. But then here, I really like this feature here. You've got the revision history, and then this is where you can add it to favorites as well. So if this sheet is one that I'm going to all the time that I'm always constantly looking for, I can just check that star and now it's a favorite. And when I go back to that other sheet that I was just on and I hit filter by favorites, it'll be added to that. But this revision history is nice because, you know, as you're getting multiple revisions as you're going through this project, um, sometimes it's nice to be able to compare them or to be able to view a past revision. It, it'll always default on the most current, but if I were to jump back here to 100% CDs, the nice thing is, is that it also tells you up at the top, hey, you're not looking at the most up to date, just to kind of avoid that mistake of accidentally looking at an old one, uh, thinking you're looking at the current. Um, and then you can also compare it with the most current uh, this one here is not the best example because they're not showing up, but what it does is it overlays it and you can see up there in the top left that little window that popped up. Had there been differences, sorry this wasn't a good example, um, the most current would be in red and then the previous uh, would be in blue. So that's a couple of nice little features when you're in Sheets to kind of help you navigate it. You can also share, I'll show this real quick here. Up here by clicking in the top right, you can share this by email. So you could send them the full size PDF or a snapshot. And the snapshot is just whatever you've zoomed into. So if you're looking at something specifically here and you need to send it over to somebody, you can make some markups on here, you know, whatever they might be, who knows. Then you could go up here and you could just send them the blow up of that area uh, and email it to maybe somebody that you're coordinating an issue with. Um, that's Sheets real quick. Again, I'd suggest you just spend some time kind of going through and playing with the tool. It's fairly intuitive. Files is just going to show you that same file structure that you have in the web. You can access the different files within or yes, files within these folders. Now, one thing I will point out, I'm going to jump back in here. When you come to here, you can click these three dots and you can set it up to where you see that toggle there, download latest version automatically. You can turn that on and then it's gonna download any files that are in subfolders to that parent folder. So if you were to do it on that top one, it would be downloading everything. Uh, if you didn't wanna go that far, you could go into design files, you go to design review, and then you could do it for that very specific file. Like right now, if I were to hit this and I were to change that, it's now going to download the most up to date. And the way that it was shaded out, it wasn't downloaded, but I can just click on it to download it. Again, you're going to need internet connection. We're not going to sit around and wait for that to download, though. Um, I'll just jump. There's other things, forms. I don't know how much you guys are going to be utilizing forms, but you can fill them out uh, and submit them through here. Issues. Um, can you create issues? You can close issues, view issues. Again, you have another filter button up here. Um, you can filter based on status, so you're only seeing open um, or maybe open and in a review. And then you can have photos too. You can always add photos and adding them, you can either use the camera from your device or you can select from something that's already in your library. Maybe you took the photo a day ago and you wanna add it to an issue. You can just go search it um, and you can search photos in here as well. Um, and then this more is an important one down here at the bottom right as well, because this is where you can get to RFIs, submittals, um, meetings, some of the other modules like RFIs and submittals is a good one because now you can go in and look, maybe you're out walking in the field uh, and you're checking up on that RFI. Well, you can filter this again by status, due date, ball and court, priority. I mean, there's you can see there's a number of different ways that you can sort them, but maybe you don't care to look at ones that are currently um, in review, but you do want to see closed ones. And then you can just filter it and you can look at those closed. Um, again, you can share them. You can email a report. Uh, it's fairly intuitive again, um, but the biggest thing is just spending a little bit of time 
familiarizing yourself with it, going around and playing with it. And I would say the biggest key is to really spend time um, making sure that you understand how you've got it set up for syncing so that you don't end up with an issue where you're out there looking on your iPad and you're looking at an old set of drawings. Um, and then you start building off of an old set of drawings instead of the current. Uh, submittals is the same. I don't think we'll spend a whole lot of time on most of these. Um, you can review submittals. You can't submit submittals through uh, the app. That needs to be done through the web, but you can review them, see where their status is, or look at ones that have already been returned. Um, then there's the other items on there. Meetings, you can actually create meeting minutes on there. If you had like an impromptu meeting and you just had your iPad with you, you could set up a meeting and jot down the notes. Uh, and then obviously the other items on there. Members shows up for me because I'm a project admin on this particular project. Um, and then locations would be any that had been added to that project. Any questions? I know that was really quick. I just kind of wanted to get you guys familiar with the app. Uh, but are there any questions specifically about the build app? 